foregone conclusion. Robert is Ryan Harry Griffiths Harry doing half time? Yes, yeah, and can, you know he's doing ABC Radio too, don't you? Here at Cooper Stadium, again, brought forward with a clash with the V8s. The Reds will certainly be keen to Nothing get back that. on track after losing that seven-goal thriller to the victory. And of course, we kick off the race racism round here tonight. A positive promotion by the Hyundai A-League It's something dear to the heart of the likes of Brigitte and A1 Mobile. Equally significant, though, for the Reds is the chance to bounce back from their first defeat in eight games, and the history books are on their side. They've only lost two out of 11 matches here against the Phoenix, although they did lose to Wellington in Auckland just four weeks ago. Achoo. Achoo. I think it's going to be Furio. United may have played their part in an A-League Classic last weekend, but in the end they've returned from Melbourne without a point. Tonight's target is to regain third spot, but it's no foregone conclusion. Wellington Phoenix are in the mood to make it back-to-back -back wins on the road. Yes, great to have you on board for this rescheduled Round 21 match here at Cooper's Stadium. A game brought forward to avoid a clash with the V8s. The Reds will certainly be keen to get back on track after losing that seven-goal thriller to the victory. And of course we kick off the erase racism round here tonight. A positive promotion by the Hyundai A-League. Something dear to the heart of the likes of Brigitte and Awa Mobile. Equally significant though for the Reds is the chance to bounce back from their first defeat in eight games and the history books are on their side. They've only lost two out of 11 matches here against the Phoenix although they did lose to Wellington in Auckland just four weeks ago. So the Wellington Phoenix, well rested after that win against the Mariners in Gosford. They travelled here to Adelaide last Saturday. They've spent the week in the comfort of their seaside hotel at Glenelg. A training session every day to prepare for tonight's rescheduled match. So travel certainly not a factor for the visiting side.
Well, let's get to those lineups now. We'll start with the Reds. Two changes have been made by Josip Gombauer, forced by an injury to Marcelo Karuska and the suspension of John McCain. Michael Zullo returns from a one-match ban to slot into left back. Tarek Elrich shifts to the right. Osama Malik moves into central defence. The other change to the starting 11 sees Geronimo Newman promoted after three games off the bench. For the Phoenix, it's an unchanged 11, a reward for their barnstorming second half comeback against the Mariners. Manny Musket continues in midfield. Reese Kyra stays as left back. The rich form of the front three of Heisigams, Cunningham and Hernandez keeps Jeremy Brocky on the bench. And there are the benches. Moroni, Mabil, Barkadesh and Elsie for Adelaide. Rindle South, Brocky, Roy Denton and Krishna for the Wellington Phoenix. Well, these two teams sit on top of the form table for the last nine rounds, but in the points table, it's fifth versus seventh, so there's plenty at stake for the Reds and the Phoenix. Stick around, kickoff is next. Well, no more heat wave in Adelaide. Perfect weather for the players and spectators. Just 23 degrees at kickoff here, an early evening kickoff in Adelaide. Josip Gomba, he's described every match from here on in as a small final for the Reds, such as the congestion in the middle of the Hyundai A League points table. Ernie Merrick says there's no hard feelings after being overlooked for the Adelaide United job before the start of the season. Referee for this one is Lucien Lavadour, his 13th match in the Hyundai A League. Well, Eugene Galekovic might consider himself a little bit unfortunate to miss out on Socceroos' selection for next week's friendly against Ecuador in London. His opposite number, Glenn Moss, has been called up by the New Zealand national team for their friendly against Japan in Tokyo. Both matches, of course, will be broadcast live and exclusive here on Fox Sports. And Phoenix will certainly be hoping for another goal or two from their leading marksman, Stane Husigams, who does lead the race for the Golden Boot, out on his own with 10 goals so far this season. The former Belgian international, he looms as a key figure in what promises to be an absorbing contest between the Phoenix and the Reds. And it's the Phoenix who get the game underway. The second match in succession on the road. Alongside me for the call, Nick Meredith. We've dragged him up from the sideline into the heights of the commentary box. Nick, enjoying the view and the party pies and the air conditioning and the uh, refreshments. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Lovely introduction as usual. Really looking forward to the game, though. Probably the two form teams, along with the Melbourne Heart, I guess, in the league. And two good attacking sides. They both got a lot of goals this year. Wellington, surprisingly, have been a good attacking unit. And be very surprised if we don't get plenty of goals here tonight. It's been a reshuffled back line by Josep Gomba because of that suspension to John McCain. Perhaps that in itself something of a gamble against the uh, goal threat of Hernandez and Heisigams in particular. Kenny Cunningham as well. There is John McCain who has to sit this one out through suspension. And a couple of... Uh, Seats along from him, the injured playmaker Marcelo Karuska, who Josep Gombe assures me is only going to be uh, out for a couple of weeks with uh, that abductor problem. He is nonetheless a huge loss for Adelaide United. Of course, he recently re signed a new deal with the club. One more season, he'll be here at Cooper Stadium, at least the former Estudiantes and Argentine Youth International. 
Boyd for Wellington. Gets the support down the right by Boxer. That's a good, strong challenge, though, from Zullo. And here goes Bruce Jitte, shoulder to shoulder with Sigmund. Jitte wins the contest. The header away by Durante. Now Boxel, hit of a handball from Boxel. He goes long, too long for Stane Husigan. Good sweeping from Eugene Galekovic. Bright start to the match. It is indeed, Mike, and looks open already. Both teams are quite stretched. We thought, we weren't sure how Adelaide were going to line up, but it does look like the 4-3-3 they've given us, which is a little bit different to what they've been doing. Here's Trio for Adelaide, working with Jitte. Ferreira to his right. Step over from Fabio Ferreira. Good ball in the middle. Chance here for Jitte. Geronimo was there as well, anticipating a header. Brilliant stop on the line to deny the Reds. The opening goal of the match. Looks as though Geronimo's picked up an injury in the process. Well, the big question is, how did that not end up in a goal? Well, in fact, yeah. it was Geronimo, was it? He got the last contact. No, it was Jitte. And what a save from Glenn Moss. Brilliant. And he does come up with spectacular... Reflex save, doesn't he, Glenn Moss? That was from Geronimo in the end. He's picked up an injury in the subsequent contact. Yeah, it is a header from Geronimo, and he's, I think he's hit Bruce Jitto. That's what's hurt him. But like you say on Glenn Moss, he probably is the equal of any shot stopper in the league. Uh, it's a, one of his fortes in the game, and it's no surprise to see him pull it. How much he knew about that, I'm not sure. Maybe it just hit him, but nonetheless, the interesting thing there was the cross coming in from the right, and that's an area where Adelaide have been deadly this year. Ferreira's going to give... Young Reese Kyra, a real handful tonight, you'd imagine. Wonderful ball, and it was, wasn't it, from Ferreira. Geronimo is OK. Moss has kept the Phoenix in it. Brilliant early stop. Reminiscent of a wonderful save he produced against Central Coast Mariners earlier this season. Doubly difficult there, Nick, because he wasn't sure who'd end up with the final contact. The foot of Jitto, the head of Geronimo. Yeah, I agree. With no you. time to react. I agree with you there. I think Jitto's probably put Geronimo off, and it's almost like a closed eye header there. Didn't get a chance to pick his spot because he wasn't sure if Jitto was going to get to the ball. In absolutely superlative form at the moment, Bruce Jitto. Maybe even career best form. Here's Isaias. Now yeah, Zullo. Looks for Thirio. Down goes Geronimo. The challenge from Leah. He'll get a word from the referee. Vince Leah. Just on Bruce Jitte. I think he's one of the guys that suffered from going overseas too early. Seems to benefit now from regular game time. He's back in the groove he was when he was such a deadly duo with Nathan Burns and the like here. Watson. on the pass by Tarek Elrich. Well, they certainly played their part in that wonderful match at Amy Park last week, didn't they, Adelaide United? And Sergio Thirio made a little slice of history, the first player to score a hat-trick and end up on the losing side in the A-League. from Moss has uh, been held up by the wind and Jitte looking to release Geronimo tries to get past Boxel he holds his ground now Leah pressured by Thirio is Boyd and Michael Boxel unconvincing in trying to play it forward to Tyler Boyd they are under pressure here at the Phoenix they got to be careful here Wellington they're getting pinned back High press from the Reds, and they're finding it difficult to get out. Now a chance for the Phoenix to uh, close down the space, force, forcing Galekovic to go long. Here's Cunningham. We've hardly seen a sight of him to this point. Now Boyd taken out of it by Zullo. Be disappointed, Michael Zillow, not to have been named in that squad by Ange Postecoglou this week. Really uh, hoping to be part of the World Cup in Brazil later this year. 
not on his own in that regard. He's probably another one that struggled with game time, not playing enough for what the national coach wants to see. He's had his injuries and suspensions, but I'm sure he's on the radar. It's been a problematic position for the national team for quite a while, and he's got some overseas experience playing there, so he'll be on the radar for sure. In from Hernandez. Away by Bogart. It'll be a corner. Sigmund tried to keep it in. We'll get another opportunity from the set piece. Speaking of World Cups, Carlos Hernandez hoping to be part of the Costa Rica squad alongside Kenny Cunningham. In from Hernandez. Away by Isaias. Here's Ferreira. Closed down quickly by Leah. Clean challenge. Here's Hernandez again. He goes for goal. What an attempt from Carlos Hernandez. Outrageous. Striking the upright. Only a player of his quality would dream of taking a shot like that. He's bent that ball almost, you'd think. I don't know how he's done that. Uh, that's it. Inside of the foot, he's bent it. But he certainly had you. I think he probably was going to the other side of the goal, Mike. But the form he's in, you just don't know what to expect. Anywhere within 30 yards, he's back to the form he was when he won the player of the year. Space for SAS. He's got Geronimo to his left. Plays the ball early. Kind of jinking his way past Boxall. Gets the shot in. Geronimo was on target, but much easier this time for Glenn Moss. Well, the early signs for Michael Boxall is that he's going to have a game on his hands in direct opposition to Geronimo, who will be keen to make an impression after spending the last three games on the bench. He gets his chance with that injury to Marcelo Karuska, his countryman. Cleared by Kyra. Boxel pressured immediately by Thirio. Hernandez skips away from Zullo. The rebound almost broke for Boyd. He's taken a knock to the shin there, Carlos Hernandez. Thirio. Now Geronimo. Watson. He split two teammates there with the pass, Cameron Watson. Still a problem for Carlos Hernandez. He's on his haunches behind play. He's dealing with a recurring calf problem, Carlos Hernandez, playing through the pain barrier, but I think this is a different injury here. He took a knock to the shin. Yeah, I think it is just the shin, Mike, and they, they sting a bit. It'll take a while to run it off. But... Pretty tough man, Carlos Hernandez. He cops as much attention as anyone in the league, so I'm sure he'll run that off and he'll be back in the action in a minute. Geronimo has been very prominent early. Isaias. Back to Geronimo. Isaias again. Goes for goal. Great save from Moss, spread himself well. Was moving in the air from SAS. Still chasing his first goal in the A League, the Spaniard. It's as close as he's come. Here's Zullo. Michael Boxwell must be wondering what he's done to deserve this. Here's another look at the angle and did move in the air. But all of Adelaide's play so far has come down this near side of the field. Boxall getting an absolute workout. On the other side, Rhys Kyra has hardly broken sweat. He's a quick player, Michael Boxall, for a big guy, but he perhaps lacks a little bit of mobility, and that's where Geronimo is going to try and expose him. And what are we, 11 minutes in, and he's had a bit, a bit of a handful so far. Big upper body, big strong guy. You just wonder if he's more suited to a central defensive position than out wide. He is a centre half by trade, but with Sigmund and Durante in good form, no space for him there. Be happy just to be getting a game, although at the moment he is uh, sucking in the big ones. Michael Boxall, here we go again. 
Bogart clipping it forward, looking for Geronimo. Boxall's 1v2, taking no chances with the clearance. He needs a bit more help, perhaps, from Tyler Boyd in a defensive sense. They dodged a bullet there. If that ball was just a little bit further infield, that, he was away. Boxall had picked up the run of Zulo and he was all on his own. Switch by Bogart, looking for Ferreira. Here's Cunningham. Now Moss, who's kept his team in it with two big saves. Musket. Bursts into space. Put too much on the pass, Matty Musket. Back in midfield to cover for the season-ending injury to Albert Riera. He's off tomorrow to join his national team, Malta. He's been recalled for a friendly against Albania next week. to Bruce Jitte, as many must get discovered. You always end up with a knock or two. He loves that one-on-one -on -one physical contest. Yeah, he's playing the old traditional centre-forwards role. He's very strong upper body, physically a good, strong player, Bruce. He's doing really well at holding the ball up, and it's been instrumental into Adelaide's play because he's bringing the, the creative midfielders into the game. Behind, Duranto needs to time the challenge and does, but that will be a corner for Adelaide United. Such is the explosive speed of the Portuguese winger Fabio Ferreira. Player, of course, recruited to the club by former coach John Cosmina from second tier football in New South Wales, where he was playing for Dulwich Hill, a club run by the Portuguese community, but his claim to fame is being on the books of Chelsea and in their youth system under a certain Brendan Rodgers. Here comes that corner, can't beat the first man, that's Heisegems, who's hardly had a touch. Elrich lines it up, and not too far away either. Moss scrambling across his line. Well, no doubt Adelaide United have been the dominant force in the first 15 minutes of this match. Yeah, they have, they're all over the Knicks at the moment. Knicks have got to get a foothold in the midfield. Hernandez, Leo, those sort of guys are just not getting their foot on the ball and at the moment the Reds are doing pretty well what they want and they're going to get a goal soon because they're exposing them out wide and it's only a matter of time if it keeps going like this. Well, they did start slowly, didn't they? The Phoenix against the Mariners last week, so there no sense of panic by Ernie Merrick on the sideline. They won four of their last five away games, Wellington Phoenix, so they have gone a long way to solving what has been their Achilles heel throughout their Hyundai A-League history. Isaacs. Three Adelaide players immediately swarm around the Wellington striker. Kyra. It's the forward movement of Cunningham. Comes inside instead. Muscat looking to pick out Heisegems. Has left it short. Chance for Zullo to attack the space, which he does. Too quick for Hernandez. Still going, Michael Zullo. Jitte. He's kept it in. Zullo. Malik. Yeah, Elridge. G 
Ajite. Shot blocked by Sigmund. Sayas turned it over but wins it back immediately. Now Elrich again. Ferreira. Elrich has done well, creates the space for the shot. Not a bad delivery. Boxall under pressure. Does well in the circumstances. They're getting deeper and deeper, Wellington. Look how far back they're defending now. And on that ball was in open play. They're almost on that penalty spot. They've either got to push out or they've got to get tighter on this Adelaide midfield because they're just doing what they want at the moment. SAS lines up a shot and it doesn't test Glenn Boss on this occasion. 20th goal in the A-League, still waiting to get off the mark. You see how Sanchez. Bogart again wins the header. Boyd. Now Musket. Durante. Good ball for Kyra, but in the end he couldn't control it. Zullo. Adelaide had worked it from right to left. Geronimo takes Boxall on the outside. Boxall gets back and makes the challenge. That move all started from a really clever ball out of defence from Osama Malik. Instead of just driving it as far as he could up the field, it was a really cultured pass to Bruce Jidde. And I think he's about the most improved player in the A-League, Osama Malik. Watson's cross. Claimed by Moss. Musket. Sigmund. Wellington looking to keep the ball. You saw the stats. 70% of the possession so far belonging to the home team. Only Merrick has identified a couple of problems which need addressing. Clever ball by Alvarez. Picks out Ferreira, still at Ferreira! And his shot blocked by Segment, crucial block by the Phoenix centre-half. And now a chance for Heisegems at the other end. He's one out at the moment, State Heisegems, only Hernandez in support. He goes for goal, Heisegems, and it's a regulation save for Eugene Galekovic. Well, end-to-end -end stuff, but one thing Wellington do need to get is some support, some help for these two fullbacks because they're getting isolated. Tariq Elrich made a 40-yard run there with no one near him. If they don't get some help for these two fullbacks, they're going to be in real trouble. Well, does that suggest to you, Nick, that Cunningham and Boyd are probably starting too high? leaving too much space in behind? Well, they're just, they're just not getting close enough, Mike. They're not shuffling from side to side where the ball's going. Well, right now they're set up quite well. Tyler Boyd's probably got to be a bit deeper there, but they're set up pretty well now, but they've got to keep that structure as well in broken play. Musket. Challenge came from SAS, who's picked up a knock. Musket. Hernandez. Not sure what he had in mind there, Carlos Hernandez. for a handball by Durante, but the man that needed convincing, Lucien Lavadur, wasn't interested. Now Leah. Boxall. Heavy touch from Michael Boxall. Strong challenge from Zullo. Breaks here for Hernandez. Cunningham forced wider than he would have preferred. 
goes for the early cross, blocked by Osama Malik. And the last touch came off the Phoenix player. Opportunity lost there. You'd like to see Kenny Cunningham back himself one on one and take Osama Malik on. He's quick off the mark. A lot of space in behind him there to get into the penalty. I'd have liked to have seen him take him on there and really ask a question of the defender. Galekovic. Good ball out from the goalkeeper. It picks out Zullo. Two again is in behind Boyd, and again it's 2v1 for Boxall briefly. Here's Geronimo, he goes for goal! Geronimo, spectacular! Wonderful! Stunning! Well, you summed it up, Mike, it's all of that. It's a fantastic strike, fantastic move. Once again down this side, they've exposed the Wellington defence, and it's not Boxall's fault. Tyler Boyd's got to do a lot better, but that's just a wonderful strike and finish. Well, he's onside when he receives the ball, Geronimo Newman. It's set up perfectly. He might not be a great goal scorer, Geronimo, but he is certainly a scorer of great goals. And there's another one to give Adelaide United the early lead here at Cooper Stadium, a lead they undoubtedly deserve. What he is, he's a scorer of great goals here at Hindmarsh. That's a wonderful strike, great technique. He knew what he was doing as he was happy to flick the ball up in the air to give himself the volley. And Wellington have got to get this right. That's Tyler Board. If he sees that on replay, he's going to be really disappointed in the effort he made to get back and help. Goal number seven of the season for Geronimo. It's given the Reds the advantage. Wellington Phoenix had hoped they might have weathered the early storm. That hasn't turned out to be the case. And Ernie Merrick knows that he has to get on top of these issues sooner rather than later. Having a word to Manny Musket, the midfield is a large part of the problem. Hernandez chips it forward, looking to catch Adelaide United off guard. Boxall's pass is misdirected, but he recovers well enough. Durante, Hernandez. Cunningham. Chance here for Leah, his shot blocked. A well, win here for the Reds will take them back to third spot above the victory on goal difference. The Phoenix, the win would take them from seventh to fourth with one result. That's how tight it is. Big ten minutes here for the Phoenix. You can see this goal again from Newman. Outside of the foot, it's not just a hopeful blast, Mike. He's picked his spot there. He knew what he was going to do, and that's a great technique, you know. I think you'd back a player like him, he could do that quite often. Wonderful technique. He's practiced that plenty of times. No blame attached to Glenn Moss. The ball moved away from the keeper. Tirio. Twenty-five minutes gone. The question is, Nick, can Adelaide United maintain this intensity? really have uh, come out of the blocks, haven't they? Well, if you'd have asked me that after about round seven or eight in the season, Mike, I'd have said no, they faded badly in games. But their fitness has definitely improved. Have a touch from Isayas. A little step overs as well. Here's Ferreira back to Isayas. Invited to shoot. He's determined to get off the mark, isn't he? Isayas Sanchez. Yet to score a goal, as we've mentioned. 
far too much room here. Once again, Ferreira's picking up the ball in space. They're not, you know, that's got to be blocked. They've got to get bodies out there. I know we talk about a lot of shots going between players' legs and the like. You've got to get out and put pressure on the ball. Just back on to Adelaide, whether they can sustain it, Mike. You'd have to say over the last seven or eight weeks, what we've seen from them is they can. Of course, Izzy is waiting for its first goal. There is the goal-scoring charts led by Stain Husigims on 10. We've got Newman now on seven, his teammate Thirio on six. They've spread the goals more evenly, Adelaide United, than some of the other teams. Here's Kyra. Musket. Thirio. in, keeps Ferreira onside, the cutback is clever, chance here for Thirio, must score, and he does! Adelaide United stretch their lead, wonderful wing play from Fabio Ferreira, a simple finish in the end for Thirio. Well, the first goal was brilliance of an individual strike. This one is fantastic team play. Once again, too much with that wide. Ferreira, he had one thing in mind when he got that ball. He picked out his man in the middle, composed finish, and the Knicks better get ready here or this could be over by half time. Well, he couldn't miss in the end. Sergio Ferreira. Patrick against the victory. A goal now against the Phoenix. Two goals in quick succession. And the visitors are in deep trouble. They barely tested Eugene Galekovic in that Adelaide United goal. He'll be determined to keep a clean sheet after that howler against the victory, which led to the goal from Archie Thompson. And he'll, of course, be keen to... Uh, the line that he is a player worthy of consideration for the World Cup as well, having missed out on the squad this week. You nearly cursed him there. Zullo. One touch to get rid of Boyd. Malik. Still chasing shadows, Wellington Phoenix. It looks as though Ernie Merrick is going to go to his bench early because he's seen enough. Right, Denton, the player asked to stretch his legs and warm up. Elridge for Adelaide, that's across. Uh, he'll be keen to forget in a hurry. Well, Ernie Merrick's got to do something because if it continues on like this for much more, the game's going to be over. Not exactly sure what the change is going to be, but I think it'll be structural, Mike. And one of these wide players who, to my, to my mind, haven't been doing their job. Tyler Boyd would be my pick, and that looks like what's going to happen. He just hasn't done his defensive job. It's all right to be a good attacking player, but you've got responsibilities defensively, and he's not fulfilling them. Face like thunder there from Ernie Merrick. He is uh, very, very unhappy with what he's seeing. As I touched on, Nick, travel's not an issue. They've spent the week here in Adelaide preparing for the game. Isaacim slips it through. Chance here for the Phoenix. The flag is up. And it was... Tyler Boyd, who was the last man in for the Phoenix, he perhaps senses that he's not long for the match. Is a 
there he is. Now yeah, Malik. Thirio played in by Bogard. Here's Ferreira. Takes on Kyra. Malik drives it towards Geronimo. It's all rather comfortable for Adelaide, but that's a cheap turnover from Elrich, rescued by Osama Malik. Down he goes, taken out rather crudely by Manny Musket. And now the chance for the Phoenix to make that change just 32 minutes into the game. And it's the end of the section for Tyler Boyd. And on does come Matthew Wright Denton. There's the goal from Geronimo. Spectacular effort. And here's the second from Thirio after good wing play from Fabio Ferreira, the provider on both occasions. Well, we thought before the game he was going to be the one that could really open up this Wellington defence and nothing we've seen in the first 33 minutes has changed that. He's probably the most dangerous wide player in the competition at the moment. Geronimo released expertly by Zullo. Chance to make it three. Adelaide Thirio down he goes. The challenge from Musket. They scrambled well enough on that occasion, Wellington, but they do look shell-shocked, don't they? Here's Elrich. The Reds come again. Thirio. Two-goal deficit and you're a chance. Three goals and it could be out of sight for Wellington. It's just too easy. It's a great ball again from Michael Zullo. He's probably playing the best half of football I've seen him play this year. And you mentioned him for the national team early on. Well, if he continues this sort of form, he's obviously going to put himself in, in Poster Coglu's mind. But the midfield of Wellington, they're all they're defending deep, but they're not getting close to their men. You've got to get pressure on quality players like this or they'll just pick you apart. Leah. This is though right Dent has gone into the uh, support striking role behind Isaac Ems and... Mendes has been shifted wider in that reshuffle. He might have gone to a diamond midfield, Nick. He looks, Merrick. He looks that way. Uh, Hernandez pushed alongside Heisman. We'll have to wait and see. The shot from Ferreira blocked by Musket. Down goes Hernandez. That'll be a free kick for Wellington. I think what he's trying to do is make that middle of the park and just get closer to Isai and these sort of guys and stop their distribution. But it's just too easy for Adelaide at the moment, side to side, and then they'll pick off one of the fullbacks. They've got to, they've got to try and slow the game down a little bit. But to do that, they've got to get their own foot on the ball. The possession stats way in favour of Adelaide, and they've got to go some way to evening that up. Look at that stat. 83% now of the possession in the last five minutes. Adelaide United. So they haven't stemmed the tide, the Phoenix, in any meaningful way. We can talk about the deficiencies of the Phoenix, but we should laud the quality we're seeing from Adelaide United. Agree 100%. A bit maligned earlier in the year, Adelaide, that they started well and couldn't finish games, but once they got the fitness to a level and they all got on the same page as the coach, you can see that they were going to develop into a good side and the goals would come. And you'd have to say on this first half that they're as impressive as any team in the league at the moment. They've only got two of their last six at home Adelaide United so that could be a problem for them in the run into the finals which I'm sure is uh, part of their motivation for making sure they get the points from their remaining home fixtures it's 
the sort of intensity and determination we've seen in the opening 36 minutes here at Coopers from the home team. Hernandez. Well, he got under that one, didn't he, Carlos Hernandez? Yeah, you don't want to give him opportunities from that range. He's one of the players in the league that can finish a, a chance like that. Just on Adelaide with their away games. One thing about Adelaide is they're a very high possession team, so they're maybe not as advantage, disadvantaged as much on the road as some other sides. But certainly they're, you know, they'd like to be playing their football here at Hindmarsh where they're becoming nigh on unbeatable. Say yes. Jitte, good hold up play from him. Down goes Zullo. There's a bit of verbal between Vince Lear and Michael Zullo. It's not like Vinnie Lear to get involved in a scuffle, but at least he's showing a bit of passion and being a bit competitive because up until now, there's hardly been a you know, a competitive challenge from Wellington. They're just not tight enough and they're letting Adelaide play. Someone's got to try and get this team going. Geronimo. And the cross almost turned into a shot from Geronimo Newman. Just a momentary panic from Glenn Moss. Bogart has won everything in the air so far. Here's Sigmund, taken out by Jitte. Well, this scoreline uh, means that Glenn Moss continues an unwanted record here at Cooper Stadium. He's never kept a clean sheet for the Phoenix in Adelaide. In fact, he's conceded nine goals in his last two matches here, and he's conceded another couple already tonight. Not a happy hunting ground, this, for Glenn Moss. Leah clips it forward looking for Wright Denton. Wright Denton upended. Free kick for Phoenix. They're in a hurry to get things going. Hernandez looks to release Boxel. Bogart will get there first, and that should be a goal kick. And it's. We might see the old hair dry out, blow dry out at half time from Ernie Merrick. I think you'll be peeling the paint off the walls because there's nothing in football that stops you getting tied on an opponent and being competitive. And I think that'll be the least he demands from his side in the second half. I think if they can limit the damage to a two goal deficit, they are still in with a chance in the second half. We saw the way they came back against the Mariners last week. They are a team which does have goals within them they do and you're right that you know two nil is not a safe scoreline but i think on current form this adelaide team is fairly superior to what the mariners have been offering up at the moment that's a funny game isn't it you get one goal back and all of a sudden the home team gets a bit nervous you're in with a sniff but at the moment they don't look at the races Hernandez down the line to right Denton. Of course, Matthew Wright Denton's father, Michael, was uh, an international for New Zealand. Comes from good pedigree. We'll say yes, Jitte. 
releases Therio. Durante will get there first. Doesn't have too many options. Andrew Durante forced back inside to Sigmund. Chance for the Phoenix to build from the back. Now Musket. Here's Leah. This is, right, where, this is where Ernie Merrick will find out who in his team's got the medal to make a real run at the finals. They got himself out of a bad start at the season to be alive. It's who wants the ball now. Who's got the courage to come and get the ball and try and get the team to play? It's easy to make a run now and say you want the ball and hide behind someone. Let's see who's strong enough for Wellington to stand up. Ferreira too quick for Cunningham. Gets past Sigmund, still going. Ferreira brought down on the edge of the box by Manny Musket. A slalom run from Fabio Ferreira. Too quick, too direct, too strong. First corner of the match. I should say first card of the match goes to Manny Musket. Although the reaction from uh, Ferreira was a little bit delayed, you'd have to say. Yeah. It was a bit delayed, but I still think there was contact, and when he realised he wasn't going to get the ball, he was happy to fall. I've got no real problem with that. And Once again, his pace is a determining factor. He's just making it very difficult for defenders. So an anxious moment here for Glenn Moss. around the dead ball. Watson, Zullo and Isaias. Are the options. It's going to be Zullo. Zullo goes for goal, strikes the upright. Well, he hasn't scored a goal in five and a half years, Michael Zullo. That includes his spell in the Eredivisie. His last goal for Brisbane Roar against Melbourne. Victory in September. 2008. That's probably as close as he's come in those five and a half years to breaking that drought. No, it's, a one, it's an excellent free kick. Great technique. I think if he's half a foot inside the post, I don't think Glenn Moss was getting it. It's well rehearsed because Cameron Watson really with that action there, Glenn Moss takes a step across and he's, he's put off a little bit and that's an excellent free kick he's got it over the wall he's got it down i don't think if it's inside the post i don't think glenn moss is going to get that that might just be the break the phoenix need going into half time that gives him a chance come second half box shot One minute to be added Ladies on. And gentlemen, That'll be a relief for Ernie Merrick, who will be eager to get his players inside that dressing room and try and stop the rot. Didn't see this performance coming from the Phoenix, who have collected 22 points out of a possible 30 going into this match. Hernandez, the free kick, Cunningham, free header, couldn't direct it on goal. That would have been a wonderful chance for Phoenix to change the complexion of this match. A quick free kick from Hernandez. Adelaide went to sleep. Oh, they did go to sleep. That's poor defending. He should not be that open. They got away with one early in the game. Carlos Hernandez took just like that to Heisigam said. As soon as he's over the ball, you've got to be close to your man because he'll take it as soon as he sees an opportunity. They dodged a bullet there. Well, it's been a breathtaking half of football from Adelaide United. Rewarded with two goals, a spectacular effort, as we've come to expect from Geronimo Newman. A close-range finish from Sergio Thirio. Both goals, the provider was Fabio Ferreira. And the Reds have been in a rich vein of form here at Cooper Stadium. The half-time scoreline, Adelaide United 2 lead Wellington Phoenix 0. We'll now go down to Michael Zapponi.
Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, Eugene Galegovic uh, with me. Uh, Eugene, uh, you must be pleased with the way the team's responded after last week's disappointing loss. Yeah, it's good. Um, the game's not over, obviously. Um, Wellington came out last week, scored four goals, so we've still got to uh, finish up the game. Obviously aware of the danger Wellington uh, can present. Uh, right at the end there, an opportunity. What was your message to Michael Zillow in particular there? I think just get in front of the ball, just to slow uh, things down so he can't take it quickly. But uh, all in all, he's doing, doing a great job and the boys are doing great as well. Thanks, Eugene. Thank you. All right, uh, half-time here at Cooper Stadium. 2-0 to the home side. Don't go anywhere. We're back after this short break with our half-time wrap. G'day, how are Welcome back to Cooper Stadium. It's the home side that lead the Wellington Phoenix by two goals to nil. And the Reds have won eight of 11 meetings versus Wellington at Coopers. It is their best record against any team in the Hyundai A-League. Welcome to our halftime show. Joining me uh, to review the first half of action is Reds striker Ryan Griffiths. Ryan, tell us what happened to your head during the week. I ran into the back of Bruce two days, head, and uh, that was the problem. 
Now, you were due to come back, uh, name back in the squad, but a training accident yesterday. Yeah, I was going to come back. I pushed myself to get back as soon as possible. I was going to be in the starting lineup, uh, possibly, for this game. And then, uh, yeah, a little bit of a mishap there in, uh, in the training and, yeah, split my head open. All right, well, let's hope that doesn't keep you out uh, for too long. Let's have a look at the stats. It's been an impressive start uh, to this game from the home side. Two goals to nil. The possession stat, 63% to the home side. And look at those uh, passes attempted, 237 to 124. Does that surprise you, given uh, what you've worked on during the week? It doesn't surprise me at all. And uh, I noticed the crowd uh, getting a little bit anxious uh, when we pass the ball around so much. But if you've noticed the goals that we've scored, it's always fluent, it's always uh, attacking. So it's uh, great football that we're playing at the moment. It is attractive football and uh, plenty of chances are created in that first half. And, and it started beautifully, didn't it, uh, for your side, Ryan, with the first goal of the game coming from Geronimo. Coming back into the starting 11 tonight. Yeah, Geronimo has been uh, fantastic fantastic off the bench but uh, yeah he, he doesn't mind a shot cutting inside and having a shot and uh, just there that was uh, probably one of the, the best goals you're going to see this season and uh, he knew exactly what he was going to do as soon as he got the ball. The technique was wonderful and uh, it gave uh, Glenn Moss no chance whatsoever did it? Yeah he had no chance at all and I'm sure Roxel uh, won't let him cut inside anymore. Now, uh, Thierio uh, has been in great form. Of course, he scored that hat-trick last week against Melbourne Victory, and uh, he continues that great form uh, tonight with uh, Adelaide's second goal of the evening. Yeah, Thierio is uh, definitely in form. He, he could have even had another one if he uh, hit it first time. But right here, great work from Tarek Elridge. Plays it through to uh, Ferreira, and uh, Thierio is always there. Very reliable in front of the goal as well, uh, Thurio. And uh, as you see, he, he finally got to enjoy one being in front. Yeah, Fabio Ferreira has been great for uh, the Reds this season. Uh, you've been with the club now for uh, well over a month. Uh, tell us about his influence. Uh, he's been terrific down that right-hand side, setting up that goal there and also that, that first chance created in the game tonight as well. Yeah, he's just so quick. Every, every time you go and uh, try and have a, a lunge at him, he'll, he'll get past you. As you saw, he's, he's done it a few times tonight. But, you know, the, the striking... Uh, attacking force that we've got in this team and also on the bench. Uh, it's definitely going to be a, a difficult uh, task for all the A-League teams out there. Let's have a look at some of the other chances uh, created by the Reds uh, in that first half. It really was all one-way traffic. We speak of uh, Ferreira. Here he is getting in behind and uh, setting it up for Brucey and Gerono. Almost looked like they got in their way. Tell us, as a striker, what happened there? Well, I know all about Brucey getting in the way from yesterday at <laughs> training, but uh, yeah, I think uh, Geronimo could have gone that, but uh, if I was Bruce, I definitely would have gone that myself as well. So both players are desperate for it and uh, long range effort here. With, uh, we've seen Isaias uh, have a couple of chances at, at goal as well. He's yet to score one for the Reds and uh, Geronimo getting in behind again here. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's, uh, he's one of those players that uh, doesn't get very well noticed uh, being a defensive midfielder, but he's like the lifeline of our team, the amount of work that he does at the moment. And if you watch uh, how many passes he gets through, He's uh, one of the probably the best uh, defensive midfielders in the league at the moment. And uh, Michael Zula going very close uh, there with that set piece as well. Uh, Ryan, thanks for joining us uh, uh, for our halftime. Plenty more coming up uh, on Fox Sports uh, during the week, of course. Coming up, kickoff uh, tomorrow night with Tara, Andy Harper and Patrick Zvansvik in the studio. It's the ladder leaders, the Brisbane Raw, up against the Perth Glory. That's live tomorrow from 7 Eastern. Then the Central Coast Mariners uh, take on Sydney FC on our double header of match day Saturday. It's the heart and the victory, the big derby uh, after that one. All that action from 5 on Saturday. Then A-League on Sunday, the Western Sydney Wanderers uh, up against the Newcastle Jets. That one kicks off at 4.30. And your Sunday entertainment continues with Sunday shootout. Adam Peacock, Mark Bosnich and Craig Moore. Plus, for the first time and for the remainder of the season, Santo, Sam and Ed's total football from 7 o'clock on Sunday. Don't forget, uh, of course, uh, plenty more action uh, coming up uh, after the short break. And as we go to the break, uh, we're going to check out our latest local club from Goal for Grassroots. They'll be celebrating every goal Adelaide United scores tonight. They've already got $3,000 in the bank. It's Bridgewater Soccer Club. All right, guys, thanks for coming today. Let's have good fun, smiles on the faces and show respect, OK? family-oriented club. 
um, but we really focus on the respect within the Bridgewater Junior Soccer Club. And what that means for our kids is that every uh, game day, before we start off on game, is we talk about what respect means to them. And so it varies from uh, the equipment and treating the equipment with respect. It goes to um, treating each other with respect and being respectful of the game. Any money we get from Hyundai will go toward the upgrade of our grounds at Bridgewater Primary School. What's the coldest football stadium in the world? Cold Trafford. Welcome back to Cooper Stadium. All set for the second half. And as we come back to you, Mike, all of Adelaide's wins this season have come when they've been leading at half time. Yeah, thanks very much, Zappa. The Omens certainly look good for Adelaide United, don't they? A two goal cushion after a wonderful first half of football. Shell shocked Wellington Phoenix side, I'm sure, given some pretty firm instructions from Ernie Merrick during the break. He'll want a lot more from his players in this second 45 minutes. 
Their form on the road has been good, but their form in the first half here at Coopers was very, very poor by their recent high standards. Can the Phoenix mount a comeback of some substance? Alongside me again, Nick Meredith. That's the question for you, Nick. Can you see any hope of a Wellington revival in the second half? Here's Ferreira, standout in the first half. We'll get back to that question in a moment. Well, Mike, on their form in recent weeks, you'd say yes, but on their form in the first half, you wouldn't give them much chance at all. But one thing you want to do as a professional sports person is not be humiliated. So Ernie Merrick would have called on their, their pride as professional players, go out there and give a better account of yourself. The game's not out of reach. It's only two goals. They get a goal, they're back in it. So it's not out of reach, but there's got to be a, a far superior effort than what we saw in the first half. Adelaide United with the corner. go short here the Reds if they can they do Zulo to Watson now Elrich this is rehearsed here's Therio we'll get a second bite of the cherry after the cover came across from Reese Kyra Zola goes more direct, goes back post, the header from Sigmund, breaks here for Ferreira. Free kick Adelaide, challenge from Boxall on Osama Malik. Mm, thought he was a bit unlucky at first, but perhaps he did come across Malik's path and block his run, so perhaps a fair free kick. But the early signs are, Mike, that Wellington haven't come out of the dressing room again. That set piece down there, that corner, that was just too easy. They played two passes back and then no Wellington player in sight. So, so far, it looks a continuation of the first half. Here it comes from Watson. Malik gets the contact. Clearance came from Boxall. Perhaps a chance finally for the Phoenix to relieve the pressure. Here's Ferreira. Still going Fabio Ferreira. It's going to be corner by the looks of things should correct a comment I made in the first half not two assists from Ferreira just the one leading to the goal but that was a wonderful ball he also put in for that chance by Geronimo Newman really an old school out and out winger isn't he Fabio Ferreira pleasure to watch another corner for Adelaide in from Zullo underneath it is Osama Malik that will be a goal kick. He is an out-and-out -out winger, and there's not many of them going around anymore in, in football. It's what you like to see, and a guy like Bruce Jitte must think he's lucky stars that he's got a guy like Ferreira playing on the right-hand side. He knows he's going to take his man on, and when he gets half a yard past his man, he's not one of these guys that checks back. He'll get the ball in. So for a striker like Bruce Ferreira, that's... Uh, Bruce Jitte, sorry, that's exactly what he wants to see. Yes, John Cosmina really had his battles to convince the club hierarchy to sign Fabio Ferreira. It now looks like a wonderful piece of business, doesn't it, for the Reds? <laughs> Blocked there by Sama Malik on Hernandez is the reason for the free kick. It's Hernandez over the dead ball. Clips it forward, looking for Durante. Came off Bogart, who's won everything in the air tonight.
sloppy pass from Kyra. Zillow. Geronimo. It's come off Sigmund. A little bit fortunate here for Adelaide United. I'll start again through Osama Malik. Adelaide. Now Elrich. Thirio. Beats Kyra twice. Closed down by Cunningham. Now Watson. Still they keep the ball, Adelaide. I've opened up the channel now for Zullo. The best of balls for Geronimo, but he's kept it in. Heisigan gets the free kick. He's hardly been sighted, Stan Heisigan. See, Leader of the goal scoring charts in the Hyundai A League. And there's a card for descent. Mike, I think he's actually pinged Osama Malik for kicking the ball away. Which, if that's what he's got him for, is not a real smart card to get. Nigel Bogo did have something to say. Either way, it is a yellow card for Adelaide, who perhaps if there's one. <laughs> Thing that does block their copybook it is their disciplinary record they do have the worst disciplinary record in the competition 49 yellows and three reds there's a surprising change we can only assume uh, there's an injury problem for Bruce Jitte on comes Awa Mobile so Geronimo will move more central for the Reds, here's Boxall. Challenge came from Bogard. You'd have to think it's an injury. He was playing very well, Bruce Gitto. There you go, Mike. Sama Malik, one to me. <laughs> it's a groin problem, we believe, for Bruce Gitto. Confirmation there, of course, of the card for Sama Malik. Yellow card number 50 of the season for Adelaide United. To check the memory banks there, but I don't think that's the first time Bruce Jude has gone off with a groin type injury this year. So let's hope that's not something that's recurring, going to keep him out for a while because he's been instrumental in the turnaround in form for this Adelaide side. Leah, that's good ball by Ry Dent, and here is Heisegems. Mobile spins away from his marker, Awa Mobile, and he's got lightning speed. That's good defending from the Phoenix in the end. Certainly no let up from Michael Boxall out on that side. He gets rid of Geronimo, who moves central, and then he gets Mobile, who's probably a quicker player again in a straight line. So as a fullback, if you've been given a workout for 45 minutes, it's not the sort of guy you want to see coming on. Typically robust challenge from Manny Musket. He's left Thirio down in a heap. Might be a concussion problem here for Sergio Thirio. Oh, yeah, he's walked straight into the forearm of Manny Musket there. I've got to say on replay, that doesn't look too flash. That looks like, looked to me like it's got him in the jaw and it looks like he's coming with a raised elbow. And I don't want to say too much here, but it, yeah, he's lifted his elbow a bit. I don't know if you can say there's any premeditation. It's protecting himself, but he certainly hasn't missed Syria. And I think this has got him flush on the jaw. Yeah, that's nasty. Let's hope that's not serious, because in, in two minutes you could see Adelaide lose Bruce Jidde for a couple of weeks with a groin problem. And Syria, if that's an, an elbow or forearm that's caught him flush on the jaw, 
fingers crossed that's not something that's going to keep him out for very long, but it looked quite nasty. He's already been booked, of course, Manny Musket. And he has ironed out Thirio there, no doubt about it. Yeah, well, if I was Manny Musket, I'd be as far away from the scene of the crime as I could be at the moment. Certainly uh, contact with the head by the arm of Manny Musket. The question is whether the elbow was cocked or whether he was simply trying to protect himself. Either way, it's a robust challenge. That's being uh, kind. And Thirio has come off second best. He's in a bad way here, Sergio Thirio. I think you've been very kind. The more I see that, Mike, the more I think that's a red card. And he, he's lucky to get away with that. I don't even think it's a second yellow. I think... In all honesty, that's a straight red. And what's the other reds? We'll have to make a second change. Is it a neck problem for Thirio? Certainly, uh, at one stage, he was holding his jaw. Well, let's hope he doesn't come back on. It's my, my little soapbox thing here, Mike. When players get head knocks, too dangerous bringing them back on. Ferreira rides the challenge of Musket, heads towards the byline. Durante got the challenge in. Adelaide get a corner. He also have gone by waiting to assess whether he does need to replace Sergio Thirio. And now we've got another head problem, this time Reese Kyra. And there's the elbow from Tarek Elrich on the jaw of Reese Kyra. Gee, that's another one. Didn't see it in live play, but he's gone in there with his elbow up. You've got to, you know, just got to be so careful doing that nowadays. I, you know, he's probably a bit lucky there too, Tarek Elrich. It looks like Syria is going to come back on and. Oh, it's a little pet hate of mine, Mike, to see a guy get a head knock and a, what looked a concussion to come back on the field. Elric puts the ball in towards the danger zone, cleared by Sigmund. The Phoenix down a man for the moment. Kyra off the field. Josh Brindle south about to come on. They've got to wait for the next break in play. The Phoenix to make the change. Thierry is, as you said, Nick, back out there for Adelaide United. But they're far from 100%, you'd have to say. Here's Watson. Bogart. This AS feeds Ferreira. They've isolated Cunningham, who's had to drop into left back in the absence of Reese Kyra. Here's Elrich. Sigmund's header. Back to Elrich. Chance here for the Reds. Ferreira! Spectacular! Wonderful! Another super goal from Adelaide United. And they're out of sight here at Cooper Stadium. Wellington Phoenix have got a mountain to climb from here. What next from the Reds? That's, a, that, that's probably superior to the first goal. It's an instinctive strike. Top corner, no chance for Glenn Moss. Wonderful technique from a guy who's probably been the best player on the field tonight. Looked up, knew what he was doing. Super strike, knew what he was going to do. Top corner, Glenn Moss, no chance at all. And that, you would think, is game over. Well, there might be an interesting postscript to this goal, Nick, because Ernie Merrick had hoped to get on Josh Brindle South before a set piece a couple of minutes ago. He was denied that opportunity, so he was left without a fullback. And it's down that channel which Ferreira scored through. Maybe a talking point from Ernie Merrick after the match. Brindle South is now back out there. It's 
confirmation of that change. Sprindle South on for Reese Pyra, who looks as though he's got a jaw injury. Here comes Thirio. Free in the middle is Mobile. Chance for Awa Mobile to ice the cake. Desperate defending from Sigmund, and it needed to be. Well, it doesn't matter what the scoreline is. You know you're going to get 100% out of Ben Sigmund. And plenty of players wouldn't have, would have given that up almost. A chance for Adelaide to go 4-0 up. But he's, he's putting that little bit extra to get the, get the block in. But it's looking very ominous here for the Knicks. Well, what's it all over? Kenny Cunningham. Not quite sure what he's complaining about. That's certainly uh, what Lucien Lavadour is suggesting. here for Ferreira goes early chance here for Adelaide and they've buried it again Geronimo everything Adelaide touch turns to gold another assist from Ferreira another goal from Geronimo well we've seen it all four different styles of goals from Adelaide all equally as good as one another one fantastic team goal and the old-fashioned wing play from Ferreira Picked out his player in the middle, too soft on the ball, can he come in? And just look at the effort running back there from the Wellington players. Nowhere near what the effort is from the red players surging forward. Super ball, excellent finish. And 4-0, that may not be the end of it, the way this is looking. Well, they did have their full complement of players for that goal, Wellington. But once again, there was no left fullback at home. Josh Prindle South caught up the park. Durante's stretched and pulled out of the middle. He's having a word to his young fullback there. Where was the help? And Geronimo with his second goal of the night. And this ground, which has been a, a problem ground for Wellington Phoenix over the years, is producing another unhappy scoreline for the visiting team. They had that 5-0 hammering at the hands of Melbourne Hart a couple of weeks ago, Wellington Phoenix. Ernie Merrick's comment on that occasion is that every team can have an off day, but a fortnight later, they are staring down the barrel of another horror show here, Wellington Phoenix. They certainly are, because we've still got half an hour to go. The Reds are the sort of the team that they'll keep a lot of possession, so they'll open up chances. 5-0 might be a good result for Wellington at the moment. Cunningham tries to wriggle past Elwitz. They get themselves a corner. It's their second corner of the match, Wellington. And they'll be thrilled to bits, those Adelaide United fans, with what they are seeing. It's been a vintage performance. Hernandez with the corner. It's a poor delivery. He's quick, Mobile, but not that quick. The right idea from the Adelaide fullback. Sigmund. Boxall dives in. Adelaide get to the rebound. It's Mobile. Well, 
think if uh, Adelaide United get the three points here, which looks more than likely, they'll go equal third with the victory, but with a far better goal difference. And that'll put them just four points behind Western Sydney Wanderers in second spot. There's the progressive table. Should we rule them out of a top two finish? That's how it stands in the Hyundai League as we speak. Can we rule Adelaide United out of a top two finish in this form? Absolutely not. And we know Western Sydney are now involved in an Asian Champions League campaign. How that affects them, we won't really know. You did say Adelaide's got a fair few away games to come. That may hinder them, but in this form, you would have to say they're the, the form team in the competition at the moment and no one would be looking forward to playing them. Include your uh, beloved Brisbane Raw, their next game, Adelaide United, up at Suncorp. Well, you, you know, that's probably going to put a stop to their run, Mike, you'd have to think. <laughs> but no, look, I think that is probably shapes us the game of the season. Two teams with a really enjoyable style to watch, pleasing to the eye. Two teams who like to command a lot of possession. Adelaide won up there on the road earlier this year, so that'll be one Brisbane certainly wouldn't have us a home banker, and it's one really to look forward to, and might be the determining game in whether Adelaide can push into that top two spot. Well, Josip Gombe now relaxed enough to uh, go to his bench again. Cunningham shot is a good one and it's found its way past Galekovic. Super strike from Kenny Cunningham. Trying to add some respectability to the scoreline. We have seen some outstanding goals, haven't we, here tonight at Cooper Stadium? And that is right amongst them. That's another one. The shooting boots are on the night. I'd like to see that from behind. I think Eugene Galekovic might be a little bit disappointed with that one. It seemed to me like it may have even bounced over his arms. Yeah, I think he'd be disappointed with that, Eugene. He's got a hop in front of him, which is an awkward spot. Yeah, I think he'd be disappointed in hindsight, Eugene Galekovic. No doubt Cunningham hit it well. We're going to see one of the great comebacks. And it would be a great comeback from here as Michael Moroni comes on to replace Isaiah Sanchez. Second spell of the club, of course, for Michael Moroni. Split by a period with the Melbourne Heart and, of course, a season in China. Just a quick word on Isaiah that's just gone off there. Well, it's the first time I've actually seen him play live and the amount of ground he covers that you don't see unless you see him live at the ground is, is quite incredible. He's a, a real workhorse. He, all that's good about Adelaide, a lot of it comes through him. Fernandez. Isagips. Moroni's gone into a central defensive position and Malik's moved into midfield as a result of that change. There he is, is our Sanchez. Well respected by his teammates for his uh, often unheralded work in midfield. those guys perhaps you don't notice that much but when he's out of the team that's when you really realize how valuable he is gets the ball plays everything fairly simple but keeps it keeps the play moving and that's so much of what Adelaide are about there's a handball by Malik Malik can get the free kick he's also been booked so he needs to be careful Osama Malik Adelaide United have conceded uh, more than double the number of fouls to Wellington Phoenix. We'll get another chance here from the dead ball. Within striking distance for Hernandez. He wants to go for goal. He chips it forward instead. And it's a player to me who was caught in two minds, Carlos Hernandez. Here's Musket. 
Hernandez. Cunningham. Right, Denton. Another free kick for Wellington. Hernandez, they take it quickly to Phoenix. And he telegraphed the pass. Well read by Zullo, who sprints forward. And it's 3v4, now Mobile. Zullo gets it back. And he got it all wrong when it counted the most, Michael Zullo. A lung busting run from the fullback. He did everything right. What a shame he wasted it with that, that final pass. His performance has been excellent. His energy levels have been great. He's hardly given the ball away. And he's been part of that left hand side for Adelaide that caused so many problems early on. Right, Denton, clever ball. Cunningham's in behind. Cunningham tries to slide it past Galekovic. Almost broke for Heisigams. And it was good last ditch defending from Bogart. The Phoenix. Suddenly they've got a spark, Wellington. Breaks here for Thirio. Geronimo stayed on side. Kept on side by Brindle South. Chance here for Geronimo. Cleared off the line by Brindle South. Almost a hat trick for Geronimo. You're right about Brindle South, though. He should have stepped up there. He's played them all on side, the young guy. A bit of an experience. He's covered his lines, he's got back. This is developing into a shootout now, so there's plenty more goals to come here if it continues like this. Hernandez. Isaacs. Leah looking to thread it through to Cunningham. Hernandez. Isaacs. Right, Denton. Now Musket. He wasn't expecting that right, Denton. Geronimo was in quickly. Musket up ends in, and here's big problems for the Phoenix. It's a second yellow card for Manny Musket. It's followed by a red. Wellington Phoenix down to 10 men. You could see it coming. You could see it coming, and he can have no complaints. I thought he was lucky to dodge a red card earlier on for what I'm starting to think. The more I think about it was a cynical elbow but there's no doubt that's a that's a yellow card and that's good night for Manny Musket and we've still got the best part of 20 minutes to go here and they've got to try and contain a rampant Reds outfit with a man short looks like we're going to see Jeremy Brocky come onto the field and I think it's the end of Carlos Hernandez well, it goes from bad to worse for the Phoenix we are Double change here, the first by the Phoenix, and then there's to be replaced by Jeremy Brocky. And Jordan Elsie ready to come on for Adelaide United. Hasn't really been his day, has it, Carlos Hernandez, perhaps, hampered by that persistent calf injury. Substitution for Adelaide United. Yeah, he was, he was never really in the game in a, a midfield that was overrun. It's not really Carlos' sort of game. And no real reason to keep him out there. The game's probably gone. You certainly don't want to risk him doing any more damage. He's got an able replacement in Jeremy Brocky. They're creating a few chances. A little bit of extra pace up front. And they might they might get another goal. Thirio makes way for Elsie. Still holding his neck after that heavy collision. And here's that goal scored by Thirio. Just look at the run he's made there. For all the young players and midfielders at home, so hard for the defender to mark someone who arrives late into the box. That's the sort of run that we've seen over the years by a Tim Cahill, often in the air, but the same sort of run. If you can arrive late like that, it's so difficult for a defender to pick you up. A goal he deserved and a wonderful performance by him. Now Moroni's moved into midfield. In that uh, reshuffle, Elsie goes back alongside Bogard in central defence. Malik is in midfield alongside Moroni. Still holding his neck, Sergio Thirio. I've just got to hope that there's uh, no real damage. Here's one for you, Mike. You know all the international rules. Manny Musket's now suspended. Is he going to be able to play for Malta? 
Yes. Different competitions. I knew you'd know. Brocky looking to get on the end of the cross. Interception came from Osama Malik. Down goes Moroni. Meeting the sandwich between Leah and Boxall. 15 minutes left on the clock here at Cooper's Stadium. Until this point, it's really been a lesson for Wellington Phoenix. The next game is at home to Perth Glory. A good nine day break to lick their wounds and assess what went wrong here. Interesting 15 to 20 minutes here just to see how hungry Adelaide are. They could really put the Phoenix to the sword here. Or are they happy to walk away with a 4-1 win? Mobile. Ferreira. He's been an absolute standout for Adelaide United. Fabio Ferreira. Spins away from Cunningham. Feeds Ferreira. And the wheel upended by Boxall, who dived in. Gets a card. He has been putting himself about Michael Boxall. Yeah, he has. That was coming. A couple of tasty challenges from him that's a little bit unlucky there i suppose but it's over yeah he's yeah foot's he's off the ground the no, he's no. over the ball yeah i'll take that back that was a little bit a little bit naughty just on ferreira how does a guy go from being on the in the squad at chelsea to dully chill how does your career go down that path <laughs> well when he's spoken about it he talked about just being disillusioned by professional football didn't get his chance in the chelsea first team despite his countryman jose Mourinho being in charge uh, ended up heading back to Portugal and uh, came to Australia to visit the country, spend some time with some relatives, get his love of the game back at very uh, semi-pro level. Actually saw him play for Dulwich Hill at Arlington Reserve one day before he uh, was recruited by Adelaide United. He'd have struggled there, wouldn't he? You've got to ride in that standard. Funny, it's a, it's a similar story in a way to Thomas Bruce, isn't it? Got a bit disillusioned with the game, dropped down a level. What have we got here? We saw Michael Zulo rattle the woodwork earlier on. There's plenty of players around the ball. This might be more uh, favourable for the right foot of Cameron Watson, given the angle. Zulu, I'm sure, will be pretty keen to get that drought out of the way, that goal-scoring drought I've talked about. Comfortable scoreline. By the look of it, it could be Cameron Watson. We'll have to wait and see. It's going to be Watson. He goes for a goal, just clears the frame. A heart-in-the-mouth moment for Glenn Moss. I'll give Glenn Moss the benefit of the doubt there. I think he had this one covered. But good technique, good free kick. He nearly got it up and down. Perhaps it's one of those ones where it's it's almost too close to goal to get the ball up and down. But good technique. It's a well-taken free kick. Well, speaking of goal droughts, Cameron Watson, 88 games without a goal. Now still looking for his first goal in the Hyundai A-League. I know you can say, Nick, that you know if you're a fullback or a defensive midfielder, goal scoring is not an important part of your game. But when you start to get to uh, 80, 90, 100 games without a goal, I guess it would play on your mind. Oh, mate, defenders can get goals. I got 28 and 250 games. Mike, this just rolls off the top of your tongue. That's absolutely stat. zero excuse for Cameron Watson not having a goal by this stage. <laughs> and it would play in his mind. Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially if he takes some dead balls. He's going to get the chance. 
to have some strikes on goal. He'll get one. I mean, his technique on free kicks, we've seen a couple of times this year, is good. Well, he certainly had plenty of time to uh, play in a goal celebration, that's for sure. He won't know what to do. That's the problem when you don't score off and you don't know what to do. Ferreira does what he does best and just attacks the opponent, attacks the space. The arm was raised from Durante. Another yellow card for the Phoenix. Want to see that one again too? No, oh, no, probably yellow. But you take every time you raise your elbow or raise your arm at a player, you're taking some risks. Or am I getting soft? Never. Here's another player who's looking for his first goal over the dead ball. Michael Moroni, 91 games without a goal. Yep, another poor effort. Because <laughs> he's played a bit further forward sometimes too, so he's got he's had no excuse. Elsie. Bogart. Elsie back to Galekovic. Probably not going to get any our votes tonight, Mike, but Osama Malik, what a good player he's developed into. He's been a bit of a journeyman. He's been around the Fury, started at Adelaide, off to the Fury, back to Adelaide. He's so instrumental to what Adelaide do. He's gone into this number six holding midfielder role now, which I think is his best position. He's probably forced to play in defence tonight through McCain's suspension, but he's developing into one of those players that looks like he could really take his game to the next level. Here's Geronimo. Well, what do you uh, make of this if you're Ernie Merrick? There's uh, another look at the race for the Golden Boot. Still led by Stain Isaacs. Newman has uh, moved up the charts with the brace here. Getting back to that uh, question on Ernie Merrick, Nick, he's made an early change. He's changed his midfield shape. He's emptied his bench, and he still really hasn't got the reaction he was looking for. He ignored that horror result against Wellington Hart in many ways. He just put it in the uh, memory bank, if you like. Didn't dwell on it too long, but he, can he afford to uh, not dissect this performance? No, I wouldn't think so. They're a bit reflective on many of the teams in the A-League, though, aren't they? They can manage a 4-1 win away, a 5-0 win at home. His expression doesn't give much away there, Ernie. That's the way it looks when they're 5-1 up or 4-1 down. His expression doesn't give much away, but it's, it's got to be difficult for a manager when his team's putting in such fluctuating performances. It's really hard to get a consistent level of play out of his group. We'll get an update on that injury to Reese Kyra. We'll go down to Michael Zapponi. Yeah, early indication's not good, uh, Mike. Uh, they suspect it's a broken cheekbone and uh, they'll take him to hospital straight after the game. Well, that is bad news for Kyra. Very bad news indeed. Nick for Reese Kyra. You'd imagine that uh, Tarek Elridge will be the first person to uh, send his best wishes. No one uh, likes to see a player with a serious injury. 
No, it's a nasty one. It looked nasty. Look, he'll go and apologise, I'm sure. It certainly wasn't his intention, but look, it's one of those ones you see in modern football now that they get reviewed. People have a look at it. It didn't look great. Uh, yeah, I just don't like it when players are raising elbows and that. It's just, it's unnecessary. And it's left a, a young guy who was having a tough enough night already. Now he's got what appears to be a fractured cheekbone, which is going to keep him out of the game for quite a while. Here's Ferreira. Played in by Bogart. He releases Elrich. Elrich goes for goal, but he was uh, under real pressure from Cunningham. Couldn't settle on the ball, Tarek Elrich. I don't think there was any malice in it from Tariq Elrich. I mean, I know the guy's... He's one of the nicest guys you'd ever meet, Tariq Elrich. He certainly does... has never appeared, that sort of player. It's an instinctive thing that players do to put their arms up to protect themselves and gain an advantage. But if you do happen to catch an opponent with an elbow, you can get yourself in trouble. Boxel, taken out of it by Mabil. Spoke again this week, uh, Awa Mabil, about his tough upbringing in a refugee camp in Kenya and his uh, happiness at being in a settled environment here in Adelaide United, living the dream with his first pro contract, still insisting that his big ambition of playing for Manchester United one day is not beyond him. So much to like about uh, his character and his footballing ability. Awa Mabil, very humble, delighted to be learning his craft among such uh, good players that he's got here at Adelaide United. Well, there's no doubt he's a talent. Every time I've seen him come on the field or start a game, he's a handful for any defender. Still very raw, but he's got all the natural assets that you'd want in a wide player. Now we'll have another look at all the goals we've seen tonight. We've seen some pretty good ones, Nick. We've seen four of the best. Four different goals in a lot of ways. The first one, a pure strike from Geronimo. Wonderful team goal there. Another fantastic strike from Ferreira, who's been clearly the best player on the field. He then sets up that one for Geronimo. So we've seen four goals of real quality from Adelaide and then a real quality strike from the Wellington Phoenix. So if you wanted to come and watch quality goals, you've got it all tonight. Geronimo keen to get the match ball. He's on a hat-trick. Down he goes initially. The clip came from Grindle South. Advantage played by Lucien Levador. Here's Zullo. Now Mobile. Gets to the byline, A1 Mobile. A header from Sigmund, who can hold his head high for the Phoenix. Cunningham still in the wars with that foot injury. Isaac Gibbs. We just saw there a clear example of the, just the difference in class and quality between Ferrer and Mobile. They both get round their play. Mobile had the chance there, just slide it back to an unmarked player, and he hasn't really got his head up. He's got all the natural ability to go past the player. Now he's just got to compose himself a bit more. Well, Cunningham has gone off the field to get some treatment. We've got two or three minutes left. The Phoenix down a man. Of course, uh, Ernie Merrick has already emptied the bench and uh, looks as though the Phoenix will have to finish the game without their full complement of players. The boot is off from Kenny Cunningham. It's an ankle problem, perhaps a foot problem. It hasn't been the Phoenix's night. It has been Fabio Ferreira's night, that's for sure. the cause of the injury for Kenny Cunningham. Probably what Wellington aren't going to like either, Mike. We've had a few stoppages this second half, so we might see a little bit of added time, which is not what they want. They'd be happy for a final whistle right now and get out of here. Four more minutes to be added on. There's plenty of stoppages. 
Pizzullo looking for Geronimo. Strong challenge from Sigmund. So Adelaide United will be in third place. And Lucien Levadour blows the full-time whistle here at Cooper Stadium. With a bullet. Just going to say that it's third place with a bullet, isn't it? They're the team that's really on the rise. The Hart and Wellington have been in good form, but they're, especially in the Hart's case, probably giving away too much start. But this team looks the real deal. They'll have a goal difference of plus eight, Adelaide United. Melbourne victory, minus two at the moment. So that's worth uh, a point in itself, that goal difference advantage. Offside call against Awa Mobile. First offside call against Adelaide United in the match, 91 minutes gone. Heisegems. Moroni. Watson. Geronimo, chance for a hat-trick, and it's been put in by Mobile. Awa Mobile ices the cake for Adelaide United. Caps off what has been a perfect night for the Reds. Fantastic through ball by Osama Malik, just showing what an improved player he is. He's picked it out with a nice little dink off the top for Geronimo, looking for his hat-trick. Unluckily, hit the post, but... Reveal Johnny on the spot and it caps off a real performance and the ball there from Malik. Lazy from Heisigams there, he's played everyone on side. Across the keeper, didn't know much about it, Mobile, but if you don't follow in, you don't get the chances and it's not, it's not him more than what Adelaide deserve. Fifth goal of the game for Adelaide United. First goal of the game for the substitute, A1 Mobile, you're right, you didn't know much about that. Doesn't matter. There's the... Goal celebration from uh, Mobile, worthy of the goal itself, and it's a terrible scoreline for Wellington Phoenix, a wonderful scoreline for Adelaide United. A real statement from the Reds here. Even early in the year when Adelaide perhaps weren't getting the results that their performances were on, you could see that it was coming, that they were going to put a few teams away when things went right for them. Now they've got the fitness levels, they can take their intensity up for longer than the 60 minutes that they were doing earlier on in the season. They're really putting teams away, and the second half has been equally impressive, if not more than the first half. Well, not only are they winning, Nick, but they are producing fantastic entertainment. 13 goals now in their last two matches. Seven goal thriller against the victory. Six goals here against uh, or involving Wellington Phoenix. So they are the entertainers of the competition. Yeah, they are. And I, mean, I know Gomba early in the season was saying his team was a work in progress and this may not be their year that they're looking down the track. But I think they're going to have to rethink that because on this form and the form we've seen them in over the last month, they're a real contender and a team that no one will want to play, be it home or away. And now the highest scoring team in the competition have moved in front of Brisbane Raw. And it's been a night to remember for Adelaide United and a night to forget for Wellington Phoenix. A bounce back from that defeat against the victory with a super performance here, Adelaide United, against what was an informed Wellington Phoenix side, but Adelaide have put them to the sword. Two goals from Geronimo. It's a wonderful wing play from Fabio Ferreira. Clever finish from Thirio. A last gas goal from Awa Mobile. A consolation for the Phoenix from Kenny Cunningham. But there was only one team in it tonight. It was a team in red. Full-time here at Coopers. Adelaide United 5, Wellington Phoenix 1. We'll now go down to Michael Zapponi. Yeah, Michael Zullo with me. Uh, Michael, uh, geez, they said uh, this is a work in progress. Not bad for a work in progress. That's right. You know, it took, uh, it took a while to, to gel, sort of, but um, it's starting to anyway. Uh, we've still got a long way to go. We've got no illusions that we haven't achieved anything yet, but 
you know, the signs are there and we're all happy with uh, where we're going. At one point in the season, uh, people were saying you wouldn't make the finals. Uh, now we're starting to talk about you making the top two. Does that surprise you? Not really. I mean, we're playing well. I mean, I think everyone at the club had the feeling that we could, we could really uh, go far this season. And I think you can't let criticism go to your head. You know, you have to keep working hard and and uh, and have the belief that it can finally pay off in the end. And like I said, we haven't achieved anything yet, but uh, we're getting there. What about you? A point to prove tonight to the national team coach? A little bit, you know, I mean, of course, you want to go out and, and play well every game. Um, I was a little bit disappointed that I wasn't in the squad, of course, uh, but, you know, uh, we've got some massive games coming up and I'm just concentrating on those for now. Speaking of those massive games, Brisbane coming up next. You've got a couple of players that are still out tonight, uh, McCain, Karuska. That must give you great confidence that uh, you can continue to push and perhaps make the top two. Yeah, I mean, obviously they're massive players for us, um, but the, uh, Josep gives us confidence that if he puts us in, he gives us his full confidence and he believes in us and that, that can do a lot for a player. So next week's Brisbane, which is a big one for us and for me personally as well. Um, but, you know, every game from now until the end of the season is massive. We want to go for that second spot or even first, you know, that's it's getting more realistic. So we just want to go out and, and get three points every week and we can't do much more than that. Thanks for joining us, Michael. Thank you. All right, Wellington Phoenix captain uh, Andrew Durante uh, joins us. Uh, Andrew, geez, really hot one week uh, and not uh, so the next. What do you put it down to? Oh, look, the better team won on the night. There's no question. They moved us around really well. They're a, they're a very good team, especially at home. And, um, you know, we were a little bit sloppy in, in certain areas. Our passing game wasn't there, and, and we copped it. Is it especially disappointing considering you had uh, what seemed to be the perfect preparation coming into this one? You, you were in Adelaide for quite a few days, and you're quite settled and uh, coming in with good form. Yeah, look, like I said, no excuses. We, we had a good preparation. We based ourselves here for the week, so there was no jet lag. They were just too good. They, they're a very good team. I rate them pretty highly, and, um, you know, they, they scored some good goals tonight. I noticed Ernie made some changes uh, probably half an hour in when he took Tyler Boyd off, uh, put uh, more numbers in the midfield, but that didn't seem to change anything there at all, did it? Yeah, look, Ernie, Ernie made the change quite early in the, in the half, and he wanted to dominate the midfield, and that was a half-time talk to try and get ourselves in the midfield, and... Uh, we couldn't get next to them. They were they were moving the ball around really well. The home crowd helped them a lot, and uh, they just kept growing from strength to strength. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. Well, thanks, Zappa. Well, as usual, brutal honesty there from Andrew Durante. You can hardly uh, hide behind this scoreline and this performance. It was Adelaide who were clearly the dominant side. Scored some wonderful goals. Super one, this one from Geronimo Newman. No chance for Glenn Moss. Let's not forget he produced a couple of super saves in the first 10 minutes to keep his side in it. Here's Fabio Ferreira played in down that right side. Clever cutback. Simple finish for Thirio to make it 2-0 for Adelaide. It was the half-time scoreline. There were some hopes in that uh, Phoenix dressing room that the second half might be a different story. Didn't turn out to be the case. Because it was Adelaide United who got the goals. After the break, Fabio Ferreira, best player on the park. Time he gets himself a goal after providing a couple of assists. Too much on it for Moss. Too hot to handle for the Phoenix goalkeeper. That put Wellington Phoenix uh, out of sight, really. Here's a wonderful ball in from the right side by Ferreira. A composed finish from Geronimo to make it 4-0. And by that stage, that was just a question of by how much. The Phoenix gave themselves some respectability thanks to this goal from Kenny Cunningham. Took a bad bounce in front of Eugene Galekovic. But that's still a decent strike from the Costa Rican international. It was uh, too little too late, really. And in the end, uh, Adelaide United got the final goal of the game. Geronimo on a hat-trick, denied by the base of the post. The rebound going in off Awa Mobile. To give us that full-time scoreline of Adelaide United 5, Wellington Phoenix 1. Here are the Alex Tobin Award points. No surprise, really. Standout performance from the Portuguese winger Fabio Ferreira. He gets the three points. Zulo, wonderful, made the concession that he was trying to prove a point to Ange Postacoglu. He gets the two. And with the brace of goals, Geronimo Newman gets the one point in the Alex Tobin Awards. Here is the table as it stands. And look at that for Adelaide United. They've jumped to third spot with that very healthy goal difference. They're above Melbourne victory on that goal difference for Wellington Phoenix. It could be a disastrous result by the end of the weekend. And they are now really chasing that top six finish despite their recent good form. Their goal difference has taken a battering. Well, we certainly got plenty of entertainment here at Cooper Stadium. Plenty more entertainment coming up.
over the next few days around the Hyundai A-League. Plenty of good games coming up as well, but from Cooper's Stadium for now, from me, Mike Cockrell, Nick Meredith, Michael Zapponi, and the team, it's good night.
because they've been in good form, but they've never actually breached that gap properly. No. Because other results time. haven't really helped them. Mm. Okay. Are we going straight away? Yeah. Are we going, uh, hello? Simsat? Sat. I'm, I'm a bit loud. I've already broken one chair up here. I don't want to bust another. <laughs> Hello? Is that too loud? A um, little bit. Little bit. Yours is 